Disclaimer. These videos are meant to be a brief overview of the subject. They are written to meet time constraints while still conveying factual historical information. My sources for each video are in the video summary below and can get you started on a more in-depth look at the subject. On a personal note, if there is a way to mispronounce the name, I will do it. It is a gift and I am sorry about it ahead of time. Welcome to Things You Should Know, the Civil War Edition. Today we're going to talk about the Battle of Grand Gulf, located in Grand Gulf, Mississippi, on the 29th of April, 1863. By April of 1863, Confederate General Robert E. Lee had been very successful at stopping U.S. General Ulysses Grant and the Union's attempt to take Vicksburg and the Mississippi River. Lee enjoyed some advantage from his position, but did not realize the position Grant felt he was in. By March, Grant's desperation had kicked up a notch, and he came up with three possible modes of attack. The first was to move up north to Memphis, Tennessee, and push into Vicksburg by land. Grant did not find this agreeable. The cost of an overland movement like that would be too much for him personally and politically to bear. He was worried that Lincoln and the rest of Washington would consider this a defeat and that he would have to suffer from failure. The second consideration was an attack on Vicksburg from across the river. This exposed his men and made them vulnerable. His men couldn't afford to pay the Butchersville for that type of mission. This left him with a third option, to head south through Louisiana, cross the river, and come up attacking Vicksburg from the south. The third option, from his perspective, was his only option, and he had U.S. General McClernand and his men march south to New Carthage, followed closely by Union General James B. McPherson, who had traveled by boat. Finally, Grant had started moving towards his goal of Vicksburg and the Mississippi. This was done with Grant ordering an attack on Confederate General John S. Bowen and his men among the fortifications and artillery batteries at Grand Gulf, 30 miles south of Vicksburg. The intent was to destroy the artillery that would be a danger to McClernand's 13th Corps, who were arriving by steamboat and barges soon. The attack would be performed by a flotilla of Union ironclads commanded by U.S. Naval Admiral David D. Porter. Seven ironclads rolled down the river on April 29th, consisting of the USS Pittsburgh, Louisville, Carondelet, and Mound City. They are followed closely by the USS Benton, Tuscumbia, and Lafayette. The battle was long for a naval engagement, lasting six hours as the ships approached the defending forts for Grand Gulf. The lower Fort Wade was cleanly knocked out of action by an exploding artillery piece that damaged the fort internally itself, but the upper battery, named Fort Coburn, remained active. The fort was just too high up for the ships to be able to sweep the fort with fire. Unfortunately for the Union ships, while the Pittsburgh, Louisville, Carondelet, and Mount City all carried 13 guns each, they could only bring four guns to fire on the fort due to the positioning. Porter ordered a ships to withdraw after realizing how strong Fort Coburn was, he declared that Grand Gulf is the strongest place on the Mississippi. This was especially felt by the crew of Tuscumbia, which had been knocked out of action. That being said, Grant continued to push and ordered his men to continue farther south. Under the cover of descending darkness, Porter met up with troop transports and then attacked the fort again. This time it was purely to give the troop transports time to get past the fort under cover darkness. Once the transports had passed Fort Coburn, they traveled south where they found a suitable place to land the 25,000 men on board those steamships and barges. Eventually, they found a landing at Bruinsburg Landing where they began the process of moving towards Vicksburg. Casualties were relatively light for both sides, with the Union losing a total of 80 men, 22 killed and 58 wounded, while the Confederates lost a lot less for a total of 22 men. This included 3 killed and 19 wounded. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.